Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of WKRP Montrose. Uh, we've got, you guys are obviously enjoying these because we can just see from the downloads, uh, but we're lucky enough today to have another musical act with us. Uh, I'm going to introduce them in just a second, but first let me take this opportunity to just give you guys a heads up. Rob is in a curmudgeonly mood today. He's not stopped complaining since we got here this morning. And, uh, oh, I hi, just, Rob. I don't, know, I don't know where to begin with your grammar for a start. My grammar? Carry what's, on. What's wrong with my grammar? Carry on, carry on. Right. Explain to the people why you think I'm in a bad mood. Why do the English think that they can speak English better than everybody else? Why is that? That joke? Yeah. You flogged that horse to death. No, I haven't, that actually. That stupid English joke. Yeah. Be creative. The people are bored of you now. Why, why mess with something that's already working? See, that's the thing. Speak to, right. the, speak to our guests. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, how's it so going? So in the studio today with us, we've got, I, I was going to call you Jean. I almost screwed it up. Gene. Jean, John it's Sandoval. Oh, no, it's, not, it's crossing the lines. It's not pronounced Gene. No. no. Yeah. John. Not Gene. Hey, take it easy, everybody. Let's keep it, let's keep it civil in the studio. <laughs> I don't want to see you get beat up, Rob. It's, he's got a guitar. It's just one swing. <laughs> he can buy another one. That's a nice guitar. You don't just smash those over people's heads. Chris. Yes. I, 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 you're going to have to forgive me. I did not get your last name. I got the band's name. Uh, yeah. Like is it Takers. In, is it Takers? That's, Chris no, Takers? I'm just kidding. It's, it's Mullen. It's, tr- it's Tris, by the way. It's I mean, Tris. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. Tr- well, guys, Tris. Yeah. Thanks, for coming, thanks for coming in the studio. Thanks we for appreciate having us, it. man. I appreciate it. Um, tell, me a little bit, tell me a little bit about the band itself. So, like, how did you... How did the two of you guys get together to create one takers? Let's start there real quick. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking like, wow, we should have scripted this. I was like, are you talking? Am I talking? What's happening here? Um, Yeah. So the one takers. Wow. It was, I played music before John's played music before he moved to town. We kind of immediately uh, connected over not only music creation, but studio stuff. And, um, Coffee. Talking talking about the ins and outs of making music in this town. And I was like, my biggest problem is like, I don't really find a lot of musician, uh, musicians that I, Those two. that I'm like vibing with. Right. And um, so we, we decided to give it a shot. And initially it was Chris Mullen and the, we had one other member. And so it was just like a supporting band for my solo project. Um, but very quickly we were just like, a, there was like a branding issue where I was playing like sad cowboy music all by myself. And we were like turning into this rock <laughs> band and people were like either sad that they booked a rock band when they really wanted background music for their like dinner party. Right. Or they were like, no, you can't, oh, we don't want to book you because we really want a loud band. And so pretty quickly we were just like, we need to drop the Chris Mullen. Like he's a problem. And, um, <laughs> And so, yeah, that's kind of like the initial, like the one takers was we were trying to do some promo material and we just, we took a whole bunch of takes of things, but ended up using the first take of each one. And we were like, mm. yep, yeah, now the first time we should have just trusted ourselves. All so, right. Yeah. It's a bold name then. You it's, know, like we, yeah. we get it right the first time yeah. every time. Uh, no, I think it was only just the first time of the one right. time we did it. But there yeah. we go. So it kind of stuck. And then I know it sounds a little cocky. Yeah. But I'm like, I, we're not, we're not well, like that. I mean, we're kind of the one takers, but it's not because we get it right the first time. It's because we're too lazy to too do, lazy to do a second take. <laughs> it was so much work. Take two. Uh, yeah. Let's overdub. Yeah. yeah. We did actually do two takes of one episode, but that was because Dennis messed something up. And like did oh, the podcast. No, no, okay. Listen. No, no, no. That, that's not going to it. We're not here to talk about you. Fine. Um, Whatever. So, how many times do you think Dave Matthews Band has thought about renaming their band? Because like nobody cares. Does right. Dave Matthews explain what the Dave Matthews Band is? He just no. does his thing, man. And I mean, sells, I guess so. Yeah, I'm just saying. He's packing shows. I feel like I'm a Dave Matthews fan, but it shouldn't be called the Dave Matthews Band. Well, I mean, it's the same. Bon Jovi, Van Halen, all these bands named after one of the guys right. how, in the band. How dare you? Bon Jovi should definitely be named Bon Jovi. That, that explains all that you need to know. No. It's like a Jersey thing, Bon Jovi. They're all from Jersey. Right. That's what I'm saying. Richie Sambora. Right. Uh, he deserves That's my dude something. right there. Yeah, yeah. I love Richie Sambora. I mean, to be fair, Bon Jovi is kind of like... 
it's not something you hear like Chris Mullen is kind of like, well, you know, like that's right. your neighbor or what? Yeah, yeah, Bon Jovi. Dave Matthews, that's what I was going with. Right. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Matthews. Sure. Dave yeah. Matthews, boring name. Bon right. Jovi Van Halen. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why you'd name a band that. Okay. Um, I mean. Then you have Sade. You, 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 oh. The one neighbors, the one namers. Right. Yeah. Sting. Maybe you should have called yourself the Sting. one namers. No, yeah. no, the just one. Uh, you know why? Madonna, like Prince. Right. Do you think if you give yourself one name, like that's instant, like on your way to stardom? Are you Chris? Yeah. No, no it doesn't, you got to be good. Said. You got to be good to to give yourself one name. Yeah, yeah. That's that's ballsy. Like how good? Like at what point can you Prince, go from Madonna, Sting? That good. That good. That good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. I feel like there's an in-between. Madonna wasn't always Madonna. Prince was Prince in the Revolution. Still Prince. Okay. And that's his actual name, too. Prince. So, yeah. Yeah. No, no last name. I'm pretty sure he has one. Rogers. Yeah. Nelson. No, but I'm saying. Not that I like Prince. Not right? anymore. <laughs> not, or, I don't listen to that music. You don't listen to Prince? Oh, I love Prince. Oh, okay. Largest, I was, yeah. that, he got me. You nailed me. Yeah, that was, that's, that's not fair. Good, yeah. I, I, I this bit is on live, that. by yeah. the way. Yeah. This is live. Thank yeah. you for tuning in. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like Prince, you're not welcome on this podcast. Right. How that's true. That? You didn't ask Chris <laughs> if he likes Prince. <laughs> I'm just going to be really quiet. Yeah. I'm not. No, no, no. They come as a duo. If one of them likes it, then, and then it counts as two. That's a little skirt. Right. Potentially. I'm talking like Rainbow Children Prince, though. Like underground, like, you know, B-sides. Yeah. Prince. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. You know, the mainstream stuff's cool, but there's nothing like the deep cuts, man. Is the it deep cuts? The deep cuts. That's a phrase I've only just come across. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's from, a, there's a, this really stupid YouTube ad that plays, and it's all about, you should get YouTube premium, because you can listen right. to things like deep cuts, and the, yeah. one of the actors is- I have that. Yeah. So you, so you got sold on the advertising as well. No, the saying. ad is stupid because <laughs> part of the reason it's stupid is is it doesn't work in Colorado, right? Because the ad is these two people going out camping into the wilderness uh-huh. and they're complaining that they can't download their music from YouTube. And oh, the upshot right. is either get YouTube premium or go somewhere that's not beautiful and remote. It's a stupid ad. Right. So, cause, and, so Colorado like everyone from Colorado is just looking at them like you don't even have the right gear. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're not camping. Yeah. That's not I don't camping. Believe this. Yeah. yeah. So that would be me. Chris, you kind of touched on it. I had a question. We at, we've asked like the previous are you from Montrose? So originally? I've, been, I've been from Montrose um for for a long time like gosh. Uh, I moved here in elementary school then moved away and kind of moved back in high school and really fell in love with the area. Um, and so I started a business and just kind of stuck around in the area. So, yeah. But, but so jo- even for part of your childhood though, you, yeah, you lived in Montrose. So it's as good as, yeah, know, it's as good as like where from, I'm from. Yeah. Right. That's becoming a rare thing in Montrose. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard to find people that are from the area as much as you find people that mm-hmm. have moved here. That's and dangerous. John, you moved from Connecticut? Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember that. So, oh. I mean. I do my homework. Yeah, all right. I try Sweet. to remember. I try to remember things. Sweet. So johnsandoval dot com. Hey, back to you. Oh yeah, nice job. Good plug, <laughs> Chris. Quick chance. Yeah, I have not. <laughs> oh, too late. No, I'm just kidding. Have, I do not have the Chris Mullins domain. I think somebody else stole that already. He's well, a basketball can, player. He's very tall. Chris Mullins. Yeah. Yeah. We so could, is it Mullin? He's he's or Mullins. No, mine's Mullin, but okay. it, you know, if you Google it, you're still gonna get him, not me. Right. No, he's old. He's, he's a white guys. Yeah. I can say that. He's, his name is Chris Mullen with no S. Singular, right? Yeah. Yeah. You said Mullins. Well, that that's the basketball player. <laughs> yeah, that's the basketball yeah. player. Yeah. He he's old. We could we could we could, you know. Yeah. Rough I mean, him up a little bit. Get him to give, not, He doesn't need the domain he's, anymore. He's not chasing me down. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. So um, so yeah, mostly from here. There's probably still like two old farmers that would slap me for saying that because I'm mm-hmm. originally from Seattle. So. Like, <clears> um, but so why don't you claim the Seattle cred and just like, Hey, I'm from Seattle, but especially as a musician, I mean, it definitely like gives cred to my like, uh, sad boy grunge music. We need to add that to the bio. (laughs) Sounds great. Seattle, (laughs) dude. See, then you're bi-coastal too, right? Like you got one of you from Seattle, the other one's from Connecticut. Wow. Like you got the whole country covered. You know, Pearl Jam. You you met up in, did you meet up with those guys? Did you hang out? Yeah. Did you get some Starbucks? I was a very prolific yeah. six-year-old in, in <laughs> the music it. industry. So, uh, but 
just back to you for a second about Connecticut. How did you, how did you get here? What was the whole? Uh, moved in 2020. So, you know, if something happened in 2020. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. You know, just, talk about you know, that. little family, two kids and wife and I were just reevaluating life and just doing some praying. It's like, all right, what's, what's next for our little family? So it was between Nashville and Montrose. Somehow Montrose. Really? Nashville and Montrose? Somehow Montrose, yeah. Okay. Somehow it ended up uh, being here. Which, I mean, uh, yeah. as a singer-songwriter, Nashville makes perfect sense. Sure. And we've got other people that are musically inclined in the yep. community that did their stints in Nashville and came here. Yep. But how did ultimately Montrose win out then? That's that's what we call a God thing. Okay. That's just like, you know what? It's uh, We just had the peace, you know, and uh, Montrose felt like it was the right fit. I've been doing some, you know, do, work in Nashville. And uh, so I kind of already knew the, the players, the pool, the vibe. Mm -hmm. And I love the scene. I love what's happening, the creativity. It's amazing. I just, we didn't see ourselves living in that in that world. And it's a, it's a very different world. You yeah. know, I'm trying to think I had, you know, kids and all yeah. that stuff. Now that, that makes sense. What <clears throat> is interesting though is out of the two places, everyone knows Nashville. Yep. But nobody, Montrose isn't famous. Like, how did you come across Montrose? So my wife's from here originally. There we go. There it is. There's there that connection. Is. Yep. That's, yeah. That, now Her it makes family. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to raise a family. I mean, I like Nashville too, but you don't want to raise we're, a family in some no, But we're getting on the map musically out here in this area, don't you think? I mean, come on, Blues and Brews as a festival. A absolutely. I, I, think, it's, in, I yeah. think it's happening, man. In the area, yeah. Okay. I mean, and then Colorado, like, is there any place more iconic than, like, Red Rocks Amphitheater as far as, like, so Colorado is kind of known for music. I'm not going to let you over there and just badmouth <laughs> Colorado. Like, you're forcing the issue for right. sure. I mean, you have the one takers. So right. There you go. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, so you guys, you guys recently played at Blue Corn, right? We did. How did yeah. how, what, what do you think of Blue Corn as a venue for, oh, awesome. for performing? We, we loved it, actually. Yeah? That was, like, yeah, the energy in that place at least the night that we were there was like really, really good. Yeah. Like I was surprised cause I was not, you know, I'm, I'm very jaded to the kind of like, yeah, my restaurant is also a music venue type thing that right. happens in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, I get it. Like, and, but, um, like the, the team that they put together down there, like treated us really well. And like, we packed the place out. The, cl the crowd was really loud and <laughs> we were like, are we too loud yet? And just kept going up and they're like, Nope. And we're like, turn it to yeah, 11. No, it's good. Great. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was great for us. I mean, yeah. I don't know everyone's experience down there, but we were like floored. Well, I, great, feel like, great I feel like they're doing a really good job over there as far as like the energy. And we have other really cool venues here in town for sure. But for some reason, like the crowds that show up to watch music in the blue corn, when they have music, Seem like a little notched up a little bit more. I don't know why. So the, I was really also nervous about. It. So it was a ticketed show. Yeah, and that's like mm. not. There's not a lot of ticketed right. shows in like Western Colorado right here. People are like, "Give me my free music, right?" And get a sponsor. And mm -hmm. so I was, I was nervous to like see how that would play out. But but they turned out. They turned out. It was right. great. I mean, there's nothing like a free event, but when you put a ticket, like at a price to it. It's a different, like you were saying, different value. Yeah, I mean, you ascribe a value to something. Exactly. You know, free, yeah, it's great. But I think putting a price on something, it gives it an intrinsic value. People feel like, hey, these. I think these guys are going to be good. They're going to be professional. They're going to be, there's an expectation that you have to fulfill yeah. if there's a price on it. You feel like you... Yeah. You fulfilled that expectation? Well, it's like music, man. I mean, I remember buying CDs. Right. And even before Spotify and all these streaming services, buying an album for nine ninety nine. Yeah. Right. You know, now it's like there's so much. I don't even know what to listen to sometimes. Right. It's insane because everything's quote unquote yeah. free, even though, I mean, we got paid. No, what do we get paid? Like point zero zero one penny? Well, so on your thank Spotify. You, thank you yeah. for doing that, right. by the way. Yeah. I mean, should, yeah. we, should we pay you again real quick here? Yeah, yeah. man. That's, yeah, I got a penny. Uh, so, played a hundred yeah. times. So we, Spotify, <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like, Spotify has totally demonetized everything that doesn't hit, like, a certain threshold this year, though. Yeah? So, so mean, don't don't play it, or do no, you, you play do. it? you just have to play it a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there you go. Uh, guys, when you hear this song, we're going to play a song here real quick. I'll tell you which one it is. We need a thousand... 
of you to play it at least a hundred times. That yeah. should probably help, right? That should help. Yeah. Buy us a we, cheeseburger. We yeah. should be able to do that. Let's, <laughs> come on, buy the guys a cheeseburger. All right, I'll let you pick the song. We'll, we'll just do a little intro, you know, into the song. Give them a f- flavor of the flav. Right, flavor, flav. Don't, don't, don't. Flavor, flav. Flav. Yeah. Flav. Which one do you want me to play? Want to do the way it works? The way it works. All right, here we go. The way it works by the one takers. <laughs> Hold on one second. And then we'll play live. <laughs> and then, yeah, then you're going to play it live. live. Yeah, we go. I mean, don't play the, the whole song. Well, I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm just going to, yeah. We'll give it a little feel here, and then we'll let you. Here we go. So it couldn't feeling, be a more appropriate line. Made a couple of dollars and paid the bills. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See. Made a made a hundredth of a cent and uh, <laughs> to pay the bills. Did they not pay any bills? <laughs> no, no. That's accurate. All right, so it's like a reaction video. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> hey, there's a line. Yeah. Hey. From a from a Montrose aspect, it was kind of coming back to this in trying to create a band. You said it's kind of hard to find other musicians. Like, what is it like trying to launch a band? in Montrose and you know, if you're like, for example, if you get your, your song on Spotify, you're in Denver, right? Just by going and playing a free event that has X times more number of people, the chances of downloads and, and discovery. And because you, John, you've got a YouTube channel as well. Does the one takers have a YouTube channel? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like, how do you decide as a band, like, how, like, from the business side of it, right? There's the musical, artistic side of it, but from the business side of it, how do you make those decisions? Like, where do we put the music? How do we promote it? You know, what, walk me through some of that, and then how, like, do you feel like it's any different being from Seattle and uh, being from Connecticut you. if you were in a bigger bigger market? Like, it. how does that, How what are those trade-offs? Well, early on, and then chime in, because, so... You know, he has done the, you know, the scene for a while. I've done the scene for a while. And it's not like we have all this extra time to have multiple rehearsals a week. You know, he has five kids. I have two. Um, and, then, you know, just life and jobs, right? So we're like, man, let's let's do something with intention, right? Something with a purpose. So we're like, no covers. We're just going to do all originals. Right. And, I mean, just putting that right there, we knew that, you know, we're going to have limitations on gigs and so we're like, all right, wherever we're booked, we're going to, if there's 10 people there, we'll rather play to 10 people that want to hear original stuff as right. opposed to, you know, maybe 100 that are kind of in the background doing other extra activities that, you know. So right. we're at that place that we're like, man, let's just do this more intentional and let's just do all original stuff. So, so I, I say that to, to start because, yeah. as you know, original music, it's not the easiest to kind of... Yeah. Kind to of get it's launched, yeah. quality over quantity, right? In terms As, of your absolutely. listenership, absolutely. You know, I mean, like, yeah, I think that's a very reasonable and reasonable goal to go down that route. Yeah, yeah. the 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 bands that we started, we kind of put that expectation on ourselves, and we said we know that this isn't the path to like win over the hearts and minds of Montrose, Colorado, mm-hmm. necessarily. That there are easier ways to do it, but neither of us needed to have a band that was the most popular band in the region. Right. We just wanted to make really good music yep. and we're like hoping that people would catch the vision. And that being said, it took a really like, it took like a year and a half, two years before like people really started seeing us and being like, Oh, I get what you're doing now. Like this is like, a band like it's good there's good like presentation there's good quality you guys aren't drunk you guys are <laughs> like you know and and getting that um kind of feedback from people even as far as like this summer like we've hit this different stride where people are all of a sudden like oh 
like this is like a band like this isn't just a cover band this isn't just right. entertainment um and so that that's been really cool to see but yeah from yeah. like a dollars off of spotify standpoint like it's it's a slow burn from western colorado while like i mean like i said we're we both have multiple things going on i'm running like a business and i've got kids and uh we're both fairly involved in like our church and um he's he's got like I can't keep track of all the projects he's got going on in a day. Um, so all that to say, like we wanted to make really good music and focus on it in, and just let it be what it was and let it grow kind of organically. Mm -hmm. If it can, um, spending a ton of time, just spinning your wheels on social media or like running ads and stuff like that is, um, soul sucking Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to, to put it gently. Um, so I could probably use to spend more more time doing that. <laughs> yeah, more time soul sucking. <laughs> no, but it's that it's that problem, right? That, that you, was your takeaway. Yeah, yeah. You create something, <laughs> and you could be the best at what you do, but if it's not seen by enough people, right. you know, that's it's a big issue, I think, right? And it's, it's unfortunately it's something you have to do if you create anything. Well, that was the intentionality behind that. So what you heard was that like uh, three minutes and uh, whatever, you know. So, I mean, we play that song live. It's about seven minutes with like two minute guitar solos and jams. And so that was intentional. The mm-hmm. album is going to be, right. it's going right. to reach as, mu- as many people as possible. It's going right. to be more pop oriented. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then live, you're, it's almost like, you know, I remember seeing Maroon 5. You know, I'm a big Maroon 5 fan. And like, you know, you hear all the stuff on the radio. Cool. All right. Four and a half minutes. Yeah. All right. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. She will be loved. Great. You go see them live. They're just a force of nature, like intros, interludes, outros. Mm-hmm. It's extremely musical. So I'm like, man, that's genius. John Mayer did the same thing, right? Your body's a wonderland and then extend the blues thing. So that was kind of a, so that was kind of our approach. It was like, Man, let's just get music that, you know, it'll make a five year old jump up and down and which your daughter just jump up and down and my kids do when they hear the songs. And, you know, more mature men as yourselves, right? We'll hopefully dig the stuff. Mature, that was polite. So uh <laughs> He's talking to you. <laughs> It's fine. I don't you know, mind being called mature. It means old. Yeah. So, and, and then live, we get to kind of uh, expand a little bit. And uh, so that was kind of our, our intentionality behind. Right. Well, I think it's going to be interesting, I think, for, for me and for <clears throat> our five listeners, I think. Right. I, um, at least double that It's going to be interesting to hear the, that little snippet of that song and then have you play it live and acoustic. Um, yeah, t- uh, so that's kind of a funny story because <laughs> we literally I'm made a that. rule like yeah. the first couple years of the band. We're like <laughs> no acoustic performances, like zero, because like I said before, there was I played music solo under my name for like a, a number of years in this town. And so we were having a really hard time just breaking that like association like Chris Mullen is right. acoustic music. So, yeah, this will be like a first. Good. So who oh, forced? I'm, I mean, I'm assuming you forced him into this then. That's, yeah, that's or did, or did, we, or did we force you into it? Because we we sent you a message and we're like, "Hey, look, we're not really set this up." This is a collaboration. Do. I don't know. This is this is great. All of us, man, we're all in this together. It'll be well, fine. It'll well, be great. I'm sure. Before you play, <laughs> I want to I want to mention you, you mentioned all of John's like multiple projects, and there was one that I found that I thought there was a there was something really interesting about it. So it's called Resurgent Creative. Oh yeah. Dot com. Cool. Yeah. And there was a, uh, a a screenshot of a of a of a statement that I thought was really, really interesting. And it's crazy that the, this conversation kind of leans into it. Oversharing due to underpreparing. I, I, I don't know why that stuck out to me. But I then know listening why, because it should be the tagline of this podcast. <laughs> we have to overshare <laughs> because we underprepare. Yeah. <laughs> but that did kind of, doesn't it feel like it leans into the conversation you Can just said? Like a jingle or something really great? <laughs> hey, if you want to create real music right here on the well, show, no problem with me. It's like speaking one-on-one, like public speaking one-on-one. Right. Like just prepare and have it all yeah. scripted. And then so that way you're not just, you know, right. blabbing and kind of like, and you know, our, t- our attention spans are of five seconds. So it's like, if you don't grab me in five to 10 mm-hmm. seconds, I'm on to the next thing. I'm yep. on to the next scroll, mm-hmm. the next video or, um, so that, I mean, that's kind of a, man, that's a whole other thing, but that's, uh, there's a very intentionality on that project, which is geared for like churches under a thousand and like, just pretty much want to give back what, what we've learned. 
You know, it's like we've learned a lot. We feel like we've learned. We just want to give yeah. it away. Well, and you you spend a lot of your time with Grace Church, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you, do you guys both go to Grace Church, or you go to a different church? Yeah. No, okay. That's that's part. I think that's where we met, actually. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I think is cool about that church is is outside. In addition to the religious aspect of you know going to sermon, you know, they seem embraced in a lot of like the rest of life with Grace Church. Like it always seems like they're doing something outside of that or like, you know, they embrace the music, the production. Like I don't yeah. attend grace, but I have several friends that do. And, and everybody seems um, very attuned or very in, in, in invested in the grace church yeah. community there. So I, I just thought that was kind of cool. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get out of your, I'm going to stop stumbling over my words. Get out of your way that for a second. Fantastic. fantastic. Rob is, <laughs> I, I can feel Rob's eyes like in the back of my head. So you guys, touching. we're going to go with an acoustic version of sure. the way it works yeah. by the one takers. Is that you what get, we're doing now? That's, that's what you called. Then you just were like, yeah, play no. that please, studio version first. And as we told you, we don't edit this podcast, so you really have to get this right to right, fit. On the one take, oh, you got man. one take. That's a lot of pressure. It is. That is a lot of pressure. Um, okay, yeah, so we are the one takers. I'm Chris. This is John. And we're going to play The Way It Works in its acoustic form for the very first time. Worldwide exclusive. There we go. You can have to love it. You should release a single. <laughs> All right. All right. And a one, two, three, four. This morning and I drove to work Curse this life for the way it works Spending all my time working this old job Let's get back to what I love Made a couple dollars and I paid the bills Always get to think about the way it feels See it going small in my rear view And it doesn't make sense at all Look at your life, is it a life to live? Is it work, sleeping, fighting with the kids? Times it makes you think that we should grab the boys and all in just skip town. It's a house to hold you back, then I'll burn it down. Dog, then a driver outside of town. It's a car, then a night, I roll it off the cliff. Oh. For peace, time for war. It's time for me to walk out that door. Stick my finger out the window as I drive away. Straight home to your pretty face. Pack up the bags and we'll hit the road. We could be to the beach in a day or so. When you think about it, doesn't make much sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. I guess what I'm saying is such a crime We spend our lives trying to make a dime In the end we just want more time with the ones we love Oh, we never seem to question We just walk the line in the end Maybe it's just a waste of time I don't want to spend my time building walls on sinking sand Oh, oh.
Yeah, guys. Love it. Yeah. So, right. world premiere. <laughs> yeah. World premiere. World premiere. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Is it, what is it like taking a, a song that obviously has some electric elements to it and bringing it back acoustically? Is it like, does you, do you feel like you're cheating on part of the song? Or how does that work with anybody? Do you think from a musician side? Because I, I, I feel like sometimes a, Great you see you see music come backwards to an acoustic song. You're like, that should have always been acoustic. It was probably written acoustically. And then other times you see things come back and you're, you know, it should not always so be like this. Yeah. It should always be like, we don't know what's going to happen and we're just going to go for it. We know the chords. We yeah. know, we know the vibe, but it should always be a slight question mark of where it's going. And that's why, like, I'm a big fan of like, you know, like any record you've done, you know, some bands play it exactly from top to right. from beginning to end. Cool. You know what? There's an art to that. High five. I'm more on the, you know, that was a picture from 10 years ago. Different haircut, whatever, you know, 10 right. pounds lighter. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> you know? And now it's like, this is who we are. Let's let's extend it where we are now. Man, I feel like going reggae in that bridge. Let's go reggae. So I'm kind of from that world of like, hey, we already established that on a recording. It's on Spotify. It's three minutes and 29 seconds long. You know? Right. And now it's like it's got a new form. So that is who we are now at this very moment. That's how that's how I see it. So I was like, I don't know where he's going. I don't know. You probably didn't know where I was going. We had a different ending to that song. You ended on an F. I ended on an A minor. <laughs> cool. Same chord. I mean, music theory, just a different different root note. So, yeah, I mean, that is that is the world in which John's brain works all the time. <laughs> like he's forever just like questioning the song, which is phenomenal if you listen to any of the songs that we produce we're working on the rest of the album right now it should be out later in the year but like there there are moments where you're like i think i know where this is going and then all of a sudden like this weird instrument will come in or like the part just totally changes and like you're like oh my gosh and that that's the product of his brain my brain is the over prepare so that you undershare is that how that goes <laughs> um so like i'm like this is how it was written. back to that and um so that's definitely been stretching for me working with him in a great way, like where I've had to become more flexible and cause I played solo for so long and, right. but, and that gets back to your original question. Like for me, originally this was an acoustic demo. We right. completely like Frankensteined it, like just chopped it into pieces and put it back together into what it is now. And so it's, it's kind of a weird full circle where it's like, I recognize doing it this way, but yeah. it's, it's also very different. So. Do you feel like you, you feel like that dynamic is important because in much the same way, like in comedy, right? You have famous comedy duos. There's always kind of like the straight one, you know, do you feel like if you were God. both like John, that it would not work or wouldn't work as well? Or would just be different. We would not be sitting here if we were both the same at all. I mean, whatsoever. so if if you go down a Spotify rabbit hole <laughs> mm -hmm. and you look up John Sandoval or the Sandoval band, you're going to hear a totally different version. I mean, you may recognize the guitar tone a little bit or something like that, but it's like it's a completely different beast because that's his vision. And then if you go look at Chris Mullen's Spotify, it's like way more stripped back demo versions of like acoustic music and stuff like that. And so what we have here is... Yeah, the product, right? The, yeah, the, it's... The, Exactly. The, the child of your two. Well, that's how the band started. I mean, because we talked about doing some writing and again, the whole time thing. And it's like, what's something we can do like right now? It's yeah. like, well, you have great tunes. I mean, Chris is a killer songwriter. And I'm like, I love it. Do you mind if we decorate it a little differently? Do you mind if we... It's his ta tactful way of saying, yeah. I love everything you've done, but like, can we change like Not true. virtually everything? everything. Every part of it? Like, no. without you crying. No. Yeah. yeah how that's, far can I no. put Chris without making by, him cry? By the way, I think that's, I think that's a sign of successful duos because that's pretty much Rob. Like, I have an idea and he's like, I don't like it at all, but we'll, we'll make it work. Yeah. We'll just change everything about yeah, it and awesome. we'll make it work. Absolutely. That's, yeah, you said it, man. I mean, that's. It's like I was saying, you know, you got to have a funny one. And you have a guy who pushes the buttons. <laughs> See? He's the potato guy. It's important. No, he does a very important job. He presses the buttons and I makes the stuff work. Um, I'm going to remember you said that. 
Well, it's on recording. It so is now. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to count. <laughs> it counts. We're all going to remember that. All right, real quick. Sorry, let me jump back out to you guys out there watching and listening. Don't forget, call in 970-316-3162. Um, you guys mentioned that you might have brought a couple of T-shirts for I, the... I did. For, for us. But, but we're the sharing, giving type of people. He is. Yeah. I like to keep all the stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to make sure that you guys get one of these keep T-shirts. So I will come up with something when we put this out on, on the uh, interwebs and uh, I will come up with something, but you're going to have to call 970-316-3162 or go to WKRPMontrose.com and sign up because that's where you win all the good stuff. And right, the, Rob? The bonus, yeah. if you want to call it that, is that he might just turn up at your house or where you live with a t-shirt. That and has if happened. If you don't want that to happen, do not call because he loves to go out there and Love it. surprise people at their workplaces and stuff. So check out, the, you, you'll see it on the Instagram feed. If you guys aren't following us on Instagram, uh, we had a nice little giveaway recently to one of our subscribers on the email newsletter as well. So She was very grateful. She was super grateful. She and was she's awesome. Li she's listening because I think she's our, I mean, our biggest fan. She might have been. She, she, no, she uh, is. I think sure, she's, I think she's like gunning for my seat is what I think she's yeah. doing. I'm okay with giving her a guest spot. Um, I was going to say, they could be a little mutual. I don't know. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, tell, so tell me this. what it, Being being longtime resident and, an, and a fairly new resident, what's your favorite part of being in Montrose as a musician? Hmm. Too much? I feel like we Too know. much too soon? There's, no, that's a great question. That's what it's like to date me. If I, don't think if I, I ever, ever dated, it's too much too soon. <laughs> too much too soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would just, the first word that came to my mind is just peace, right? So, I mean, coming from a city, you're always going and going nonstop. Right. So, here's been like, man, I'm going to, I'm still busy, which is, I might be busier now. It's just my brain just is processing differently. Right. You know, um, especially with little kids. And so, I would say peace, which me, which I, for me, peace would lead to healthy creativity. Right. So I don't know if that really answered your question, but that's the first thing that came to my mind. Um, I think also seeing my surroundings, like my wife loves being here. I, I love being my, my kids love it. Right. It's, it's all your surroundings, all that it's going to influence how this comes out. Right. So, um, you know, I think, you know, when there's that joy, man, everything's going to come out good. So um, I'll also say this. I mean, I do miss certain things about the city. You know, this is not necessarily like a, you know, like a, a, a place where you can find 20 drummers or, right. you know, I mean, that's probably something we might miss in the sense, by the way, we do have two phenomenal band members that are not here tonight. Shout out to the Thompson brothers, Heck Jake yeah. and Johnny. I don't know which camera I'm looking at, yeah, right? You're good. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, shout out to you guys where we love you both. And, um, but yeah, so Jake, Jake and Johnny, we're only slightly upset that you didn't come join us because, you know, <laughs> I, mean, there's not I enough, guess we're not good enough for you, but there's yeah. not enough room for two more people anyway. <laughs> sure there is. Sure there is. I'm uh, sorry. Go ahead. Could have sat on my lap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that probably did not answer your question, but that's kind of the first. No, thing it did. Totally. No, I think it, yeah, Peace. it did. Chris, what about you? So um, honestly, like I spent a lot of my time disliking that I couldn't find kind of co-creators. There was, and don't get me wrong. There are actually a surprising number of phenomenal musicians in the area. Like, um, just not like a style thing right. like that. Um, but I would have to say that over the last, um, I don't know, even like 10 years, like more and more people are moving in. Like mm -hmm. there was mm -hmm. not a podcast that would have invited a, like a, an, a musician on like when I was trying to play my sad music in a coffee shop. Like there was not, I don't know. Wait, I couldn't have made a rock band like 10 years ago. Yeah. I, it would have like been a, a shambles, but um, more and more people do keep moving here, and the music scene is becoming like a pretty cool place to create. Yeah, and for sure. um, and that being said, we know a lot of really creative people that we can call on when we're like, like I mean, uh, that ain't love is our second single, and what the T-shirt says on it, the artwork and everything like there. We have a really good friend who has an amazing voice, Austin Marie. Shout out to Austin Marie, and Austin she Marie. was able to come Tell in them. and like add this whole element that. Um, that we were missing in the, in the song. And like, that wouldn't have happened like 10 years ago. I didn't know the people I didn't have 
people to call. So yeah, the community is really growing yeah. here, and I love that. Yeah, for sure. Is, um, that, is that something that we're? Go ahead. No, no. Go, go ahead, Rob. I, I stepped all over you. Go ahead. Rude. You I didn't have. You didn't have anything to say. No, I was just gonna. I was just gonna. <laughs> I was gonna piggyback on that a little bit, just by saying, obviously, you you know, you are busy with families, and you obviously spend a lot of time um, playing, practicing, writing, and all that stuff, but. One of the things that we like to do, too, is ask people, you know, what do you do when you're not doing all those other things? How do you enjoy the, the area that we live in? Because um, it's, a, it's a beautiful place, and we have a lot of cool stuff, but it's always interesting to get a unique take on, you yeah. know, how you enjoy this area. We do a lot of kids stuff, you know, take them to the kids' museum. I think they just opened up. Yeah. The children's museum. Yeah. That's pretty good. Have yeah, you gone? Dude. Obviously, you've gone. Yeah. It's and pretty the, amazing. Yeah, absolute yeah. library. Cool. And, I mean, we try to... I mean, our weekends are busy with, you know, uh, I work on the weekends pretty much mostly every weekend. Um, so we try to jump on all those, you know, go to Junction or something, you know, Bananas or something. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, there's, there's, I feel like there's definitely a lot of things going on. Uh, I mean, summertime is definitely popping, I think, yeah. in Montrose. I think we probably need a little more things maybe in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh but I like where it's going. Even being here for four years, I've seen like, oh, now we're adding this. We're adding. I'm like, all right, I think that's really cool. Whether it's, I don't know if it's people from the outside doing that. I'm not sure. But I mean, uh, you know, a, a city is what it is based on its DNA. Right. Right. So, for example, I'm a big pizza guy. I don't know how we're diving into this right now. But, you know, I'm like, man, just brick oven. That's the only thing I want from the East Coast. I just brick oven. Bring yeah. a brick oven pizza. Brick oven. That's okay. just the good old brick oven from, from New Haven, Connecticut. Best pizza in the, in the world. Modern right. pizza. That's bold. Because Colorado Cause boy. we have people from New Jersey. No. <laughs> no, we have, you know, people right. from Jersey and New York are going to laugh at the guy from Connecticut saying they have the best pizza. Well, no, Connecticut. I mean, Mystic I'm, Pizza. I'm, that's I'm, where the I'm, movie's from. I'm Hold not, on a second. Not, well, you don't, you obviously don't know Connecticut. Right. Like know it. pizza I, is I, the thing don't in try Connecticut. To pit us against Time each out. Other. Wait a minute. Wait seafood a minute. and just, pizza. Oh man. All right. Like I'm seafood just, pizza. I'm just saying. Only somebody from Connecticut makes this. There's going to be a fight goal. in the studio. Chris. So I don't talk pizza with John. Yeah. I mean, who's? <laughs> I do not. Yeah. Okay. So really quick, what had happened was. Yeah. See right. what had happened was. So <laughs> Italians went to. You know, to, I have a computer. I'm going to verify this as you're do talking. Do it. You're going to fact check me. All right. I love it. It's just like the. Anyways. Ooh. Glad I didn't say anything. I wasn't supposed to. Uh, so Italians went to Brooklyn and New Haven, Connecticut, Brooklyn, uh -huh. New York. So when you hear New, uh, New York pizza, it's really Brooklyn. It's very specific. Uh -huh. It's Brooklyn pizza right near Coney Island, right? And then New Haven, you have your spot. That's where like the capital of, of pizza is in both places. And there's a battle who came first, blah, blah, blah. No one knows. But Chicago, Chicago doesn't count. <clears throat> I, I love deep dish. Don't uh, Giordano's. I love. Uh, I mean, it's a different vibe though. It's like pineapple yeah. pizza. Like John, me, yeah, it's John, like, John Stewart oh, said. Blasphemous. John Stewart called Chicago deep dish uh, a casserole. It's like it's not even. <laughs> you can't even class that as a pizza. I yes. agree. I it's, mean, it's delicious though. Yeah. Have you had brown dog pizza up in in Telluride? Mm -hmm. The Detroit style, yeah. like you yeah. know, deep dish. Yeah, there's something to be said. I get the joke though that it's. It's thick. It's a casserole. It's, yeah, it's not, not really a, a pizza. That's not lasagna. And it's how dare you exactly. say that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza? I mean, oh, I'm just saying. Oh, no, you're on doesn't. that wagon. I'm it on that wagon. On pizza. Yeah, no, well, it is. Good it to is. See you guys. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know that was invented by a okay. Does seafood? Canadian too? Does seafood belong on pizza? Because that's a thing out there I, in, I think in Mystic. Clam. There's a, a famous Clams. clam pizza yep. uh, from Pe in Pepe's in, in New Haven, Connecticut. That's uh, on the top five in the country. Chris, so, is, Chris is bored. <laughs> he asked John, me about Montrose. John, John's lying. He activities. only eats cheese pizza. Like, he only take him eats anywhere, he'll, he'll eat only a cheese, cheese pizza. That's the only way to eat pizza. That's What? He, he doesn't only put anything cheese on pizza. Only cheese. Here's why. Because Your kids of, love you. <laughs> Your kids well, absolutely love let you. Let me explain why. <laughs> if I go to anywhere in the country and uh -huh. I have cheese... Then I can I have a good reference because mm -hmm. I need I need I want a combination of the dough, the sauce, and the cheese. So I need to know how much of, of each. So that's how I can able to kind of rate them in my mind. Right. You've, you're you're, sci you're you're taking the scientific approach. There has to be a constant right. in there. So it ha you can't be messing with it. It's just got to camouflage be. it with ah. with sausage and meats and pineapple. Picky eater. That's yeah. too. You know? That's yeah. why I said his kids love him. He's yeah. like <laughs> cheese pizza every day. Let's talk chicken nuggets. Um, so that that took a very <laughs> rapid turn from how do you like enjoying Montrose to 
clam pizza from That's my Connecticut. But. I mean, we just informed the public is what I can tell you. Yeah. It's like, hey, when you're looking at your next trip, you know, you're trying to figure out all these great places to go, Cancun, the BVIs, the British Virgin Islands, where is everything, Hawaii. You might want to check out Connecticut and some clam pizza. It's not that bad. Seattle. I mean, you're going to you're going to come in with Seattle can, votes here. Can we just riff, go back to the start where he said he was six years old when he left Seattle? Yeah, that's great. He yeah. wasn't out eating pizza and drinking. I, and I stuff. did love cheese pizza. OK, yeah. there we go. There's yeah. the vote. And let's, I just want to give Chris briefly. How do you enjoy Montreal? Yeah, that's right. We didn't hear from you. So we're, we're very much more like at, at outdoors. My family, uh, my my children are older. Uh, so there's there's a lot of climbing. I'm pretty much like if you can get me to water, like I'm yeah. happy. Like put me on a river, put me in a lake. Uh, like that's my jam. I'm I'm just like I want to get out on a paddleboard. Or I'm like I've done a bunch of white water stuff with friends and stuff like that. Um, that's my version of glamping is like right. camping off of a raft. Right. You know because I don't have to like do a whole lot. I'm just kind of floating down drinking my beer like. That's my style of recreating, not so much like, hey, I want to ride my mic over Red Mountain Pass like a maniac. Like, I'm not like a <laughs> fitness outdoorsman right. where I'm just like, oh, I can't yeah. wait to exert myself for hours and hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Um, but I do enjoy like just the area. I, 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 I love the lakes. I love the rivers. And um, I'm a terrible fisherman, but mm -hmm. I do like to be at the water. I really feel like that. We, that, that I wish we had a, uh, I just, we just, since you're wearing the hat, over there recently went to the gopro games in vale have you guys ever been have you ever, no, you ever checked it out epic though, yeah. oh my gosh so they have um it's basically all the outdoor sports so like they have paddle boarding but paddle boarding is you're racing down a river on a paddle board you know they have um just like we have a, an excellent water park here for um doing the kayaking and doing the tricks and everything so that's a competition they have a climbing competition the the climbing wall it's the most epic climbing wall you've ever seen. It takes up the entire base of Vail when you kind of come down the whole wall. But they have multiple, like, you know, from the courses, like, can you actually complete this course to how fast they can get up to yeah, the, the course and hit the mm. speed climbing nuts. Like, nuts. That's, mm. Those guys are crazy. I desperately want, like, an outdoor, like, I would like, I would love to see the Funk Fest kind of expand into having like some of those other competitions that could be there in addition to the river, I think would be a really cool thing that we're, that we're That's missing cool. out. Cause we have so many, so many of the schools have a, a climbing team here. It'd be cool to see some local athletes compete as well. Um, that's just, I mean, Rob is immediately bored. He, I'm surprised he didn't go to sleep on that. No, no, it's just your, you know, you having to explain to everyone out there and everybody in the room, the things that they have, you know, they have paddle boards, they go down the river. Yes, we can extrapolate what they have. So I should have stopped it at just like yeah. GoPro games in Montrose. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I think we would have got it Love from that. See, great you, dynamic. You know what? See, let's go, let's go back rain, to that. I got to rein him in. Yang and yang. But you know, or yang and yang. You know what the thing is? Sorry at any time, he could have stepped in and just been like, yeah, 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 we know, the GoPro games. He let me go to be he able to. He was watching you. I he saw was. He was I'm just watching you, He was waiting to be able to do that. I like right, guess. to take a breath sometimes before I jump uh, in. That's great. I well, love it. I don't know. I, that's how I that's how I come up with all these lightheaded comments is because I Light don't let enough oxygen right. to my brain. That's true. Okay. Well, Chris, Jean, thank you for coming thank and being so on the show. Thank you for performing. We really appreciate it. We're, we're super excited to have you here. Guys, don't forget the one takers. You guys got to go to Spotify, download their uh, their music. Well, don't download. I guess nobody downloads, but play stream the music. Stream it over and over again. You know what? Hit stream, leave your house, and put it on repeat. That's probably a good idea. Is that legal? Can we do that? Is Spotify going to get mad I at mean, me for saying that? You said it. I didn't say it. Right? And Spotify are not going to listen to this, so right. don't worry about it. They that. might. They might. Um, we distribute on Spotify, damn it. Yeah, get us banned. Good work. Um, okay. do, I mean, do, do you want to play another song? Oh. You have the Rob didn't. Robin, Rob didn't get enough of you. I mean, oh. you have the guitars. Yeah. I'm just saying. Do you want to play one more? What do you want to do? Yeah, we can do one more. All right. Okay. I need to tune, though. Cause... Here, let me mute M Rob's mic real quick. This will work better. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so did you, want, did you yeah. want to say something else, Rob? Oh, you, you better mute. Oh, oh. You better mute. <laughs> I'm going to say what I really think. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to do, bro? I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving them space. Yeah. What yeah. you got? Do you guys know that Rob never actually shares all the videos that he takes here? Like, we have, we have so much extra hey, they're, footage. they're tuning up. 
Oh, Let I'm sorry. I was, I'm I, was, good. I was having a conversation with you guys. Sorry. <laughs> so you guys ready? Sorry. Sorry. Next. I, was, I was listening. Yeah. Sort of. No, 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 no. It wasn't, it wasn't meant for you, Chris. It's okay. Honestly, it's the best way to listen to him. It's <laughs> just about sort of. Yeah. Just. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so, as we mentioned earlier, we're, we're working on finishing off the album. So, uh, we just put a wrap on this next song here, which is called Hands Over My Mouth. Yeah. Um, which should be out hopefully late September, October, yeah, full yeah. length EP. Yeah, we're waiting to kind of finalize the last couple, and then we're gonna schedule it all out there. So stay tuned for that release date. But um, yeah, so it'll play this one. It's called "Hands Over My Mouth." Ready? Whoa. <laughs> songs to you Things can get so complicated It's hard to tell the truth Less you say the less you stand to lose Only got myself to blame when I'm no deeper than a baseball game and these excuses tend to keep me tame but the truth's stronger than a hurricane With an empty plan to never let you down An architect that can never draw a house Cause I worry when I draw those lines I gotta leave something on the other side And get to thinking that it's such a crime To speak the questions that are on my, on my mind Won't on Steve but we don't tell the truth Want friendship, but we keep our friends from being close. Want love, but we want a back door out. And if we want the truth, I got no excuse. Sit the sands over my mouth. Just a little piece Just a bit of everything we need The other side of the lies we choose to speak If I'm honest with myself It's easier to be someone else, yeah It's being who you are Making no excuses that's hard as hell His hands over my mouth 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 Nice. Love it. All right. So, got uh, before we let you guys go, it just dawned on me while you were playing. I was trying to figure it out. 
talk to us about where we where we can find you outside of Studio F here in Montrose coming up. Because I was looking for your your like dates of performances. Oh, you got yeah, anything tour, coming up? Tour dates. Yeah. Tour you should dates. really talk to your like uh, web guy and see <laughs> if he'd get on. That. That'd be me. Um, so actually, we've got two shows like back to back just coming up next weekend, August second and fourth. We're gonna be at the amphitheater twice um, here in Montrose. Actually, we're gonna be playing for the Montrose Music Series, backing up. Um, La Familia Music Group. Yeah. Play, oh. it's pretty, Play some it's hip-hop. pretty sweet. We're That's like, cool. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to be, be like the live band. For incognito. Hey, can in you can, can you All put right. in a good word for us? I've been trying to get in touch with him because I want him to come talk about the program that he has. And he just took, oh, yeah. he just took a bunch of kids. EQ, man, yeah. To, uh, to, uh, to an event of some kind. Uh, but anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, but that, I mean, from what I can tell, he loves talking about it. So I'm sure he'd be, yeah. he'd be <laughs> He would love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's Friday, right? First that, Friday, first August Friday, second, yeah. yeah. And then Sunday, there's another music um, uh, event happening down there called Music by the River, and we're going to be in the lineup on that one as well. Music I, by the River. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not in the know. Obviously, Rob Rob, yeah. Rob knows. August that 4th. sounds that sounds great. It'll be fun. That's not part of the Funk Fest though. That's nope. something different. Okay. That's something different. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Well, okay, so you, they can also find information. You guys are on Facebook, right? Uh, correct. Facebook, Instagram, when I'm good at those things, <laughs> we are there. MySpace. And people can book you if they go through the Facebook page and get, in, get yeah. in touch with you? Okay. Yeah, either one. Yep. Perfect. Well, guys, I'm so grateful that wait, you wait, came. Wait, wait, wait. I have what? something to add. No, that's okay. We're Chris, good. You know, Chris, ChrisMullen.com oh. um, is actually... <laughs> <laughs> it's owned by a baseball bat company called Quincy Bats. Uh-huh. And uh, if you're interested in getting a bat, you contact Chris Mullen. <laughs> so for some reason, Chris Mullen tied up that URL and redirected it to a baseball bat company. He sold it. He sold the... No, uh, Chris Mullen works for Quincy Bats. Oh. Not this one. And that was, that was relevant how to end, end the episode where we're trying <laughs> to get know, the one right. takers there. We were talking press. about it earlier. I was bringing us full circle. <laughs> <laughs> lawsuit coming it's very true. Yep. lawsuit see see what i have to deal with chris yeah i mean i mean actually it's good to know who's responsible for stealing my domain there right. you go chris mullen at quincy bats <laughs> dot com the one takers y'all i'll be calling him thanks for yeah. being on wkrp yeah. mantras Thank you guys. really appreciate it chris Thank and john so much. we'll uh we'll see you out there and uh, enjoying some of your music real soon awesome oh, all right thank you so you guys have a great day we'll talk to you soon